The point of this story is not just the problem of a paralytic raising up from his pallet. The point of the story is the identity of Jesus. Let me pause here for a moment. Don't miss that the point of the story that we're going through right now is not just the confusion that we're facing in our culture. The point of the story is Jesus. The point of the story of the dynamic that we're having in the Southern Baptist Convention right now. I told you these are the views expressed by James White. The point of the story is this. It's not who's Southern Baptist, who's not Southern Baptist. It's not even simply a doctrinal argument. The point of the story is the doctrinal argument that clarifies who Jesus is. That's what's at stake. And it's at stake because historically, when you are a slaveholder, historically, when you've not honored the Imago Day, historically, when you've enforced and endorsed segregation, historically, when you haven't changed positions of power, here's the problem with that. Historically, when you align up with the nationalistic America rather than the gospel of Jesus Christ, the problem with that is simply this, that you misrepresent who Jesus is. And so Jesus changes the whole trajectory of this. So now that it's about him, the paralyzed guy just happens to be there in the midst, simply being a tool of the story. I got news for you. I know you think that your ideas and everything are so important, but simply, you're simply just a product and a tool of the story about Jesus. And honestly, I really don't care whether the Southern Baptist Association goes forward or not because what's most important is will the gospel of Jesus Christ and will Jesus be represented correctly? That is what's most important. So what happens? So that you can know I have authority, not just because I need to do some gymnastics to prove something to you, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. <laughs> and what happens? He rose. He picked up his bed. And he went out before them all. Now, I don't know what the paralyzed guys is thinking, but you talk about faith. He just says the word, and you know what happens? He gets up. I serve a Christ who does the impossible when we do the unthinkable. I hope this is a generation that doesn't get distracted. See, I serve a Christ that I can talk correctly about the history and reality of who we are as black people and white people. I serve a Jesus to where we can talk correctly about the injustices that's been done to the black church. I serve, see, you gotta understand, I'm even dressed that way today because understand something, from the top up, I'm dressed for the conservatives. From the top up, I'm dressed for you. From the bottom down, I got on my jeans because I'm ready to do some work. And I got on my boots too. And I wear a bow tie as a reminder that I tied this myself. And by tying it myself, my neck will not hang from anybody's rope anymore because I'm afraid of what I might say, that there's a possibility of lynching because black men often had to say those things. And their speech was relegated often. By, but my speech will not be relegated. I tied this myself this morning. And I have to wear that to remind me of speaking truth. But Jesus says, so that you may know, it's about me that the Son of Man, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, pick up your bed and walk. Now, because I'm here, I'm going to help some of you all out because you're wondering, okay, wait a minute, James, you do know you're talking to the college and the seminary. What he's doing here is, listen, I'm going to do both. I'm going to be fully God and I'm going to be fully man. And what you see here in Mark chapter 2 is the hypostatic union. That's to help some of you seminary people out uh, to make sure that you understand your education is value and very much so but it's the hypostatic union that you see God and man at work don't try to put him in a box he's the God that can deal with the pain of what you and I are going through he's the God that's very present in any kind of social political framework that you might want to take him out of but guess what he's also the God that can heal and has authority above all of that God and man always comes together in the hypostatic union that we see here 
in Scripture. Jesus could have just left him on the pallet. He could have just said, I forgive your sins, and that would have been enough. See, I've heard many say you just need to preach the gospel, and that is enough. But Jesus is showing the holistic purpose of him being God and man. He doesn't leave this man paralyzed because when you leave someone simply talking about forgiveness of sins, you leave them at the cross, but you don't take them to the three days later of the resurrection. And so when you only preach necessarily theological truths without sociological and practical realities, you got a cross gospel, but you don't have a full gospel because the resurrection says there will be change. You cannot have theological truth without social impact. Because that would mean you would say that people are free and still leave the chains on. We've had a history of that. We have. You don't simply have vertical celebration without horizontal reality. 